Today, we're going to dive deeper into the incredibly popular state-of-the-art WAN 2.2 model. If you haven't installed it and set it up yet, I have a video that covers exactly that here. Today, we're going to dive deeper into some workflows and some LoRa's that you can use to optimize your WAN 2.2 workflows. We're going to cover how you can bring your video generation time down by half and how you can use the WAN 2.2 model to upscale and do amazing image generation, even better than Flux. And we're going to do all of that on this all-in-one workflow that I've put together that allows you to do text-to-video, image-to-video, text-to-image, and upscaling all-in-one workflow, making it incredibly easy to use WAN 2.2 on Comfy UI. So without further ado, let's jump right in. As usual, I'm running everything over here on RunPod. If you don't know what RunPod is, it's a platform where you can rent GPUs. So at the moment, I'm renting an H100, which is costing me about two to three bucks an hour. And I've got my workflow and all of the models set up and running on that. On top of that, RunPod makes it extremely easy because I have a template set up that allows you to download and install the necessary nodes and models with just a single click. Just set one to the models that you want. In this case, you want to set your one two two main to one and then grab all the models that you want. To make use of the all-in-one workflow, you should probably grab the image to video 14 billion and the text to video 14 billion. I'll also be adding the 5 billion option down here as that's what we will use for upscaling. Go ahead and save the template. To make use of that, just come over here to pods, grab the GPU that you want, in my case, the H100. If you're using the template link down below, the template will already be set. Make sure you edit the template and the environment variables to set the parameters that you want to one and then deploy on demand. Once you've got it set up, go ahead and click connect 8188 and that will bring you into Comfy UI. Now, let me show you the workflow that I've got set up. Over here on the left, we've got text to image along with using the 5 billion parameter model to upscale. I haven't fully tweaked the settings yet. I have seen that it can be done for video and I'm trying to get it for image as well. Down here, we've got text to video. Over here, we've got image to video, text to video and image to video using the 5 billion parameter model. Now, did you guys know that you can actually use the WAN 2.2 model for image generation? Not only is it possible to do image generation, it's actually extremely good at it. Image quality is phenomenal, details are crisp, and it renders people with amazing fidelity. I haven't seen hardly any issues with multiple fingers, skin textures and tones are brilliant, and this is quickly becoming my favorite image to video generation model over Flux. Not only that, the WAN 2.2 model can be fine-tuned into LoRa's. So if that's something that you're interested in, please do like and subscribe as I will be covering how to train a WAN 2.2 LoRa very soon and use it for image and video generation. So the workflow for video generation is extremely simple. If you watched my previous video, you'll know that we need to have two models loaded up, the high noise and low noise diffusion models. We've got the WAN 2.2 text to video high noise over here, the WAN 2.2 low noise over here, You've got your clip, the WAN 2.1 Vey, as we are using the 14 billion parameter model. We've got our positive and negative clips over here, which are connected over to our clip loader. And then we feed a latent image, the positive and negative prompt into a vanilla K sampler. We've got a K sampler for the high noise model, a K sampler down here for the low noise model. The high noise model up here receives the empty latent. We set the steps out to 11 and denoise it at one. Now, those of you with sharp eyes might have noticed that I have a very different sampler name and scheduler. This is because I have a custom node called res for life which gives us access to these sampler names and schedulers, which are very good. Much better than the Bonello ones, and I found that they give me amazing fidelity, especially for image generation. We then feed the latent from the first case sampler into the second case sampler. The model is connected to the low noise, the same positive and negative prompts. This one goes up to 21 steps with a CFG of 8 and then we just feed the latent into a big decode. And that's basically it. And you can see here with women dressed in neon cyberpunk outfit walking down a futuristic city street, we get this really cool image. Here are a few other examples that I generated earlier and you can see that the image fidelity is phenomenal. I have seen better quality images and we can probably get that with fine tuning and tweaking a little bit of the settings. But overall, as a starting point, I'm very impressed. Now, in this workflow, we have a couple of options of what we can do. I can feed the V decode output down into the upscaler as I've got it over here. And all we're doing here is receiving the image upscaling with line saws by 1.5 to 2x, feeding it into the V encoder, 
we load up the 5 billion parameter model. I have the load clip here in case you want to use the AA clip if you're having memory issues, but this is not connected to anything. Instead, we are connecting the same FP16 clip that we have up above. And then because we're using the 5 billion parameter model, we're using the 2.2 VA. The text encoders are connected to the clip encoders. The 2.2 model is fed into the case sampler. And all we really do that's different is the image gets upscaled, it gets encoded, gets fed in as the latent image. We run it through 12 steps of denoising with a CFG of one. I'm currently testing it with the Uni PC one. And this is the final result. I'll throw up the two versions on the screen so that you can compare what they look like and see if it's actually producing any better details. Again, this is still experimental and I'm fine tuning with the settings, but I do encourage you to download it, check it out and experiment further and let me know if you find any settings that work better. Moving on, we've got the chunky image to video workflow. Now, this is pretty standard except for a few changes that we've made over here. For this particular workflow, I want to talk about the LoRa's that we've added in. So like before, the workflow is exactly the same. The only addition that we have is in front of the high and low noise models, we're adding in some LoRa's. In my last video, I mentioned that there was a light noise CFG reduction LoRa that was built for WAN 2.1 that allowed you to generate videos with less steps. Well, they released a 2.2 version for this, which you can see over here. Link will be down in the description below. And they've released LoRa's for text to video. And you'll see for text to video, there is the Seco version one and the 1.1, I suggest you use the 1.1 and they just released the image to video LoRa as well. The way you do this is you open it up. You'll find that each folder has a high noise and low noise model. You download that to your LoRa's folder and rename it because they've all got the same name. So if you're getting all the LoRa's, you're going to want to download them and rename them. Otherwise, it's going to get confusing. Coming back to Comfy UI, you'll see I've got them loaded up over here. For image to image, you'll find yourself using the model sampling SD3 between the model and the case sampler. The default for that is set to eight. If you are using the LoRa, you need to change it to five. Likewise, you'll find that without using the LoRa, your CFG should be set to three and a half for the low noise model and eight to the high noise model. However, in this case, you'll find I'm experimenting with not using the LoRa for the high noise model and only for the low noise model. The reason for that is when you use the lightning LoRa on both the high noise and low noise models, you end up with less movement or motion on your video. So my understanding is if you're able to generate without the lightning LoRa for the high noise model and then just use the fine tuning low noise model with the LoRa, you get better movement, faster generation and still very good quality video. You can see here I've disabled the LoRa. I'm using the high noise with the model sampling SD of eight that feeds into the advanced case sampler where I've got 20 steps, a CFG of three and a half, and I'm ending at about halfway, which is about 10 steps. If I was using the LoRa, I would put my CFG at one, my steps to four. I would start my step at zero and I would end at two. Right now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because we are using the LoRa here and we've set our model sampling to SD3. If I was using the LoRa on the top one, this would be ending at two, which is about 50% of the denoising. Then over here, you know, it would still be four steps and we would be doing from step two to step four, the remaining 50%. Based on my understanding, this case sampler is going to output a half unfinished video. And because we're using the LoRa, we're telling it that the denoising should happen over four steps, out of which you're starting at the 50% mark and going through to the end. So far, I've been having mixed results. So again, if you know anything about what I'm doing wrong, please do let me know. So we've got the high noise case sampler here. The latent gets fed into the low noise one. We decode that and then we just do a set video image to video, which combines all of the images into a video. And then we feed that into video combined. So as you can see here from the VAD code, we're also setting it into this set video image to video. This is one of the custom nodes. This basically sets the video as a variable, which we can then fetch over here and do the upscaling exactly how I showed it to you in the image earlier. The only difference is that as we're receiving a video, it will process that as a bunch of frames that gets put back together here at the video combine. And that's pretty much it. WAN 2.2 is incredibly powerful. 
If you've been creating stuff with it, please do come by my Discord. I'd love to see the stuff that you guys are generating. And if you want to try out some of these features and you don't have a powerful enough computer, you don't want to mess with Comfy UI, you should check out my AI image and video generation platform, KaijuGen, where I have all of the WAN models, including the text-to-video, image-to-video, 480 and 720p models, as well as the WAN 2.2 image generator. So it's incredibly easy to use this platform. And if you're using the WAN 2.2 image generator or any image generator that you like, it's extremely easy to grab the link of the image, go into the WAN 2.2 video generator, grab the image URL here, drop the URL that you want, and the app will grab it. Then just plug in the prompt that you want, customize any of the parameters that you want. These are the same as what we have on Comfy UI and hit generate. And you can start using the platform with absolutely no setup. Furthermore, you're able to disable the safety checker if you want to create any spicy or saucy videos. And video generation is incredibly fast. Videos come out in just a couple of minutes. Finally, over on Patreon, I also have a Comfy UI Super Manager. This is a little app that I've been putting together. It's in beta, so do not purchase it expecting it to work fully. I'm just making it available early to my patrons to try and get feedback and get input on trying to make the app better. Once it's available, I will make an announcement on YouTube and I will take off the beta marker, but don't buy in expecting to get a fully working tool. Do check it out if you do want a tool that makes it incredibly easy to download models, workflows, custom nodes, and get you set up and running with Comfy UI with just a few clicks on your local machine. Thanks so much. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please do like and subscribe and I'll check you out on the next one.